People ask what's my biggest fear. I would usually say something like heights or falling. But the truth is, my biggest fear is waking up in the morning and checking my phone to see if my girlfriend texted. I see she did text me an hour ago. Oops, I should have woken up earlier. As I clicked on the text, I see she has written the biggest paragraph I have ever seen. As I start reading, a smile appears on my face because she has written the sweetest words I have ever read. She starts to talk about all our good memories and times and about how much she loved me. I started to think about how much I want to marry this girl when I get older. A few more minutes later and I am still reading the sweetest paragraph I've ever received. I've never been happier, I think to myself. Why is she telling me all this? Am I really that loved? Wow, she is definitely the one, I say to myself. As I get to the sentence before the last, the tone suddenly changes. I am so sorry for... I've been insecure about my face my whole life, so I wore a mask to school. I got a boyfriend, but he never saw me without my mask. Finally, he said he wanted to see me without my mask. I finally agreed after a while. He said I looked beautiful. My self-esteem went up a bit, so I stopped wearing masks because he made me think I looked pretty. One day, me and him are texting and he sends me a post about acne, saying that I should use this product to get rid of my acne. Even though he said he didn't mean it in a bad way, it made me feel bad. I felt insecure again. He then said he had to go. And I just sat there, on my bed, reading the message he sent me about the product. Being a girl is fucking tough. If you don't have an ass, you'll get made fun of because you're flat. But if you have one, don't show it off because then you're an asshole. If you don't have boobs, people will make fun of you. If you have boobs, don't bring attention to them because then you're a slut. If you're too short, wear heels. If you're taller than guys, it's awkward. If you're skinny, you're anorexic and you need to eat. If you're fat, you're obese and need to go on a diet. Because no one likes fat girls. If you never had a boyfriend, you're a lesbian. But if you've had more than one, you're a thought. If you have periods, it's gross. But if you haven't, you're not mature. If you lose your virginity, you're a whore. But if you haven't, you're scared. If you don't send nudes, you get blocked. But if you do, you get exposed and labeled for it. And guys wonder why girls are so insecure. Open your fucking eyes. She's the backup friend, the one who stands behind the group as they walk to class. She's the girl who's never been anyone's first choice, barely even an option. People only care when no one else is around, otherwise she's ignored and just feels so out of place, unwanted, like she's just there. This is why ugly girls never get prettier in life. There's a fine line between wanting to look pretty and wanting to look perfect. When I was younger, I thought, I'll be happier when my mom finally lets me remove my facial hair. When I did that, I noticed a big red spot on my nose and I thought, I'll be happier when my skin clears. The breakout went and then I started hating my teeth. I'll be happy when I get braces, I said, and three years later the braces came off and I fixated on my lopsided nose. Maybe if I get a nose job, I'll finally be happier. When you fix something that wasn't broken in the first place, something else will become the new problem. And that is why ugly girls will always be ugly because if you only see the flaws in yourself, you will never be truly happy with your looks. I had razors hidden in places and I always had band-aids on my wrists. I was literally locking myself in the bathroom and making myself bleed because I thought I deserved it. I hate everything about me. I hate how I look. I hate how I act. I hate my personality. I hate my body. I hate my lips. I hate my teeth. I hate my nose. I hate my eyes. I hate how small my eyes are. I wish my eyelashes were longer. I wish I had prettier hair. And I just feel like when someone says they like, like me or love me, they can't love me like that. They're just using me and they just want that attention just so they could leave in the end. I don't think anyone knows how I feel in the inside. Everyone thinks I'm a happy person full of energy and loves everything. But what they don't know is that every day I wake up to put a fake face on so everyone thinks I'm okay because if I show my real self, they will ask, are you okay? Do you need help? But I just want to be alone. But if I were to tell them this, they would think I'm being rude or just don't want to be friends anymore so I have to stick to a routine so I don't ruin what we have. I'm sick and tired of just existing. I don't know what's wrong. Everything used to be so easy and fun. We wouldn't have to worry about anything. Now all I do is hide myself in my room, in my clothes, and even in my own mind. I wonder if anyone would even care if I just, you know, die? This generation is fucked up. 
If you do drugs or smoke, you're an addict. And if you don't do or try drugs or smoke, you're in pussy. When you have a kiss count of zero, you're scared. And if you have a kiss count higher than one, you're a whore. If you wear oversized clothes, you're fat. And if you wear tight clothes, you're a show-off. When you have acne, you'll get immediately called ugly and gross. When you have a snap score higher than 150K, you're a snap slut. And if you have below 90K, you're a red flag for being unsocial. If you sit alone, you're emo. If you sit with a lot of people, you're an attention seeker. If you don't have a lot of money, you'll get called out for being poor and broke. And if you do have money, it's daddy's money, even if you worked for it yourself. I'm tired, okay? Not only am I tired, I'm exhausted. Having to reach up to everyone's expectations is so draining to the point I don't want to do it anymore. I'm never good enough for anyone. I have too big of a nose, too chubby of a face, crooked teeth, ugly eyebrows, weird hair, disgusting body, or weird hands. When will I ever be perfect enough? I don't know. No one knows. No one knows anything that is going on. This is just a girl that sits behind a screen all day wishing that someone would notice. This girl is falling of the deep end very quickly, but no one seems to be caring. Her friends aren't noticing. Her family isn't noticing. She's just sitting on her bed, hoping that one day somebody will reach out to her and actually care. But no, all of these sad videos come up on her For You page, and she reposts all of the ones that relate to her, but even that isn't helping. So, so many thoughts at every single second of the day. Do they actually care? Will they ever notice? But no one is. I'm done trying because at a point everyone leaves. You have a best friend? She talks shit about you behind your back. You got a boyfriend who cheats on you and plays with your feelings. To be happier, you found comfort in an animal who disappeared. Then got a new one who passed away. Your parents calls you lazy. And your siblings thinks you're annoying. None of your friends seems to like you and it's always the same. You end up finding one person who end up being your favorite person, but later they always leave you for nothing. So what the fuck is the point in staying when other people don't? If only you know how much I cried that day. I decided to distance myself from you. But I still want to be with you. I'm ready to let you go because I love you. And I don't want you to struggle. I disgust myself. I close my eyes and hold my breath for as long as possible. I cry consistently and pathetically for a full 23 minutes. She loved family. All she cared about was her family. But there are times where family makes her cry and hate herself. They don't understand that their words and actions can affect her mentally and physically. She just wants to end it all. But yet again, she still cares for them and wouldn't want to put them through pain. Wait, let me guess. You're that person who's always had that problem. You want to let your problems out by venting to someone. But you never wanted to vent deeply with your problems. Because you don't want to bother them or get worried about you. Whenever you gotten into a fight in school and got so mad, you'd always had the feeling you wanted to cry. But you forced yourself not to, because you don't want them to call you weak or a crybaby. But you wanted to cry because you're mad. You always cry inside the house, but smile and laugh during in school, because you don't want them to be worried about you. You're depressed. You're sad. You're suicidal. You're mad. You're stressed. You're tired. And you're that person who gets emotional or gets angry or irritated quickly. And you're that person who has family problems. You have to go through hard things all the time, but you can't tell anyone about it. You wished you never been born because you never had a choice. I wanted to commit suicide several times every time I write a new letter to my family before I attempt. I probably have about 30 or 40 letters stacked up somewhere because I'm too much of a coward to go through it. I felt like I was useless because that's what I told my parents that I was a failure and a loser. Sometimes I get really comfortable around people. Sometimes a bit too comfortable. I talk too much. I get ahead of myself. And when I finally realize it, I've embarrassed myself. Do you remember what it was like to be young, running around all day, having fun with your parents? School was about trying to color within the lines and seeing your friends. Do you remember sitting on your dad's shoulders and feeling like you were on top of the world? Do you remember watching TV shows? Do you remember when sleeping was the last thing you wanted to do and you would do everything to avoid it? Now living is tiring and all you want to do is sleep. Now you worry about handing homework and essays in on time. School is about how pretty or popular you are. It's hard to have as much fun with your parents now. You are always too tired to do a sport, but if you don't do a sport, you are considered lazy. Your room is always a mess, 
and your parents always yell at you for it instead of asking why. Do you remember what it was like to be young? I've always had this feeling that I'm not doing as much as I can in this world, or I'm not changing the world in any other way. So what's the point in living? I just wanted to erase my existence to that one friend that really saved me. It made me feel less selfish of myself. Now I choose to die when some people don't have a choice. I know how you feel. Don't do that. Please don't do that. You do not know how I feel. Mike, calm down. Monsters like you have everything. You don't have to be good. You can mess up over and over again, and the whole world loves you. Mike. You'll never know what it's like to fail. Dad comes into the living room. Alive then? I say nothing because I do not feel alive. Dad sits next to me. Are you going to tell me what's wrong? No, I am not. You know, if you want to be happier, you have to try. You have to put in the effort. Your problem is that you don't try. I do try. I have tried. I have tried for 16 years. When boys say something like, why have you got such a big nose? Maybe it will fix your teeth, eat less. They don't think about how much it can hurt a girl. Girls sit in bed and cry themselves to sleep every night. But do the boys know? No, of course they don't, because they don't care. They only care about how funny it was. To that one friend who's always been there for me, thank you. I appreciate everything you have done for me. You helped me at my lowest, and for that I owe you everything. I want you to know I will always be there for you no matter what. Do you know me? You really know me? Or do you know the girl that goes to school every day with a smile the whole day and makes everyone laugh when really she's struggling to keep herself alive? Not eating, no sleep, just mentally drained. So no, you don't really know me. You know the fake me. Well, I'm glad everything's back to normal. Peter, your mother's dead. Yeah, but at least she's alive. What are you talking about, Peter? Well, you see, Lois, the key in life is to lie to yourself about reality. Smile through everything. All the bad things, why, well, you just pile them away in a place that will come back one day in the form of, I don't know, rage? But everything's fine. I'll see you in bed. There she was, sitting in her room at 3 a.m. crying to the sound of rain hitting her window. She asked herself constantly, Why didn't I try hard enough or what did I do wrong? What made them leave me? Was it because of me? Did I do something wrong? That girl sitting in her room crying was me and no one noticed. Absolutely no one did. Being a boy is fucking tough. If you don't have big arms, you'll get made fun of because you're not muscular. But if you have big arms, don't show them off because you're attention-seeking. If you don't have abs, people will make fun of you. If you do have abs, don't bring attention then because then you're a show-off. If you're too tall, you won't get a girlfriend. If you're shorter than girls, it's awkward. If you're skinny, you're anorexic and you need to eat. If you're fat, you're obese and need to go on a diet because no one likes fat boys. If you never had a girlfriend, you're gay, but if you've had more than one, you're a player. If you cry, you're not mature, but if you don't, you're too hard. If you lose your virginity, you're a whore. But if you haven't, you're scared. If you don't send nudes, you get blocked. But if you do, you get exposed and labeled for it. And girls wonder why boys are so insecure. Open your fucking eyes. I dislike my classmates. No, I don't hate them. I dislike them. Sometimes they are fucking annoying, but sometimes they can be fun to hang out with. But they are always so fucking loud and it hurts my ears. They like to scream, both girls and boys. It's mostly the boys. Sometimes, there's this two guys that always screech in a high-pitched voice. It's annoying. And when that group of girls start talking about their crushes or whatever shit they start laughing so loud and start hitting. And when my friend tells them to quiet down a little because the other sections are having classes, they don't fucking listen and continue on with whatever problematic shit they are doing. And even calls her strict like, shut the fuck up. Why did you even vote her to be the vice pres? And they don't fucking listen to the other officers like, for fuck's sake, you guys. Oh, but they are having fun. 
Having fun doesn't mean fighting each other in the classroom, screaming in high-pitched voices and hitting our classmates. You can have fun, you can talk, you can laugh, but please be mindful because the other sections are having classes and their teacher might come to our room. It hurts to see my best friends slowly ignoring me. I text them. They see the messages and don't respond. I don't know what I did, but when I did something, I'm so, so, so sorry for what I did. I know I'm slowly giving up with me, but I didn't want to give up on you. 12. She started at 12. Kids that age should be outside with their friends having fun, not slitting their wrists and trying to find a way to kill themselves. Was something wrong with her? She didn't know. She was scared, confused, and hopeless, and still is. She's the girl that talks others out of suicide, but had a hard time doing the same for herself. She truthfully assures everyone how beautiful, wonderful, and precious they all are, because she doesn't want them to feel the same way she does. As she sat in her room, contemplating on whether she should do it or not. Handwritten notes to those who she ever loved, a pill bottle in her hand. One pill after another as she began to feel oozy, she blacked out. The devastation she felt when she woke up and not- Don't act dumb. She knows what you say about her. She knows you don't like her. But did you have to make her come home crying every day? Did you have to make her suffer from all the shit talking and dirty looks when she didn't do shit? Did you even consider her feelings? I now even think my best friend is starting to hate me, which is sad because I liked her. She hangs out with other people smiling and always looking ten times happier with them than they are with me. Maybe I'm just not good enough. She hates her dad. The night when she cried herself to sleep because he hurted her so bad. He's still your parent and you have to respect him, they said. She also didn't want it to hurt her mom. So she kept quiet and pretended day after day, and hided every single emotion. I know this is hard, but I have to do it. I have to get over you. I liked you. I really liked you. I liked your laugh, your smile, your personality, just everything about you. But you didn't like me back and didn't see me the same way. That's why I stopped liking you. But the time has come. I finally got over you. When people ask me, are you okay? The only response I can give is yes. But in reality, I'm doing shitty. But I can't say I'm doing shitty, because I don't have a reason to be doing shitty. I don't have a reason to be feeling like this. So if I say I'm doing shitty, and they ask why, all I can say is I don't know, because I don't know why I'm feeling like this. I don't know what I did to deserve this. I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why I feel like giving up. So all I can say is yes, I'm doing just fine, but I'm really not. I wonder how long it would take for anyone to notice if I just stopped talking. She knows she isn't fat or ugly, but she thinks she is because all her friends are skinnier and prettier than her. She looks in the mirror for hours comparing herself to them. Anytime she likes a boy, they always end up liking her best friend, and she gets it. She's funny, pretty, smart, skinny. She wishes she was her. What is wrong with this generation? Like if a girl has more than six boys on her snap, then she's a filthy cheater. And if she has no boys on her snap, she's just scared. If you hang out with boys, you'll get called pick me. If you never hang out with boys, you'll get called lesbian. And if you wear baggy clothes, you're fat and scared to show your body. But if you wear skinny clothes, you're a hoe. If you wear makeup, you're slut. And if you don't wear makeup, you're a little kid. I'm not sure if I'm depressed. I mean, I'm not sad, but I'm not happy either. I can laugh at jokes and smile during the day, but when I'm alone at night, my thoughts are terrible. I grew up too fast. I hate looking at photos from when I was young because it makes me realize how much I lost myself. I went from being the happiest and most excited kid 
to just feeling alone and sad. I miss the joy I had. I miss running around being happy. Now everyone tells me how grown up I am, but I wish I wasn't. I miss my child self and my old friends, the bond I used to have with my parents. I miss it all so much. Why are you always so mean? I miss the old you. Oh yeah, well it's your fucking fault I am the way I am now. You had to make a comment about anything I did, good or bad, when no one fucking asked for your input. You are the reason I'm mentally drained. You. I didn't need to hear the try harder when I was having a bad day. I did nothing to you. You started the fucking rumors about me. You ruined my fucking life. I hope you're proud of yourself. I feel like I am nobody's friend. I mean, I talk to people at school and will laugh, but once I leave, my phone is dry and I spend all night sitting and overthinking about the friends I thought I had at school and how they are all hanging out without me. Every single damn night, I just sit in my dark room in silence, waiting, praying for anyone or anything to make my phone light up, but it never comes. And as she sat there on her bathroom counter, blood dripping down her leg and onto the floor, crying. She was thinking of how she had everything that she ever wanted. She had a loving boyfriend, lots of friends, a nice house, everything. Why was she still so angry? So angry at her parents, so angry at the world, so angry at her assaulter, so angry at herself. She sat there and realized that she was the problem and always had been. My little sister used to come home from school to tell me about her day and I just used to tell her to go away. I used to think that I was too old to listen to all of her childish arguments with friends because I have my own problems. Instead, she used to ask me to play with her and her dollies and toys and try to tell me that she had a crush on the new boy. But I tell her to leave because I don't want to know about her silly little crushes when I have my own life to be de She used to ask me to go to the park, but I tell her no, I'm busy, and she go and sit in her room in the dark. I feel guilty now. She's growing up so fast. I remember when she was little and I used to call her annoying. When she wouldn't leave me and my friends alone, I didn't realize how quickly she was growing. If I could go back in time to play with her and talk about her day, then I would because now we don't talk as much. I miss her being little, when I didn't realize how much I would. Maybe she just wanted to talk to me and needed a friend. I'm sorry. I don't think you understand how much I hate myself. I'm so disgusting. My teeth, my forehead, my hair, my stretch marks, my skin, my nails, my hands, fingers, thighs, legs, feet. Literally everything I'm disgusted by. It hurts when pretty girls say they're ugly. If they're ugly, I wonder what they think of me. Anxiety. It's quite hard to explain. They ask, why are you so scared? Nothing is going to happen, but they just don't get it. It's the feeling that you get just as you hit the water. It's the feeling you get when all eyes on you. Don't stutter, don't fall, be perfect. Am I walking weird? Do I look okay? Does my hair look bad? Is someone judging me? She asks herself, why can't she get over him? He lied, he cheated, it's time to move on. But she can't, she can't let go. What about everything they've been through together? What about everything she did just for him? What about when she chose him over anything and anyone else? Did that mean nothing? Did she really do all that just for him to walk out? She can't let go. Her mind is telling her to let go, but her heart still wants to stay. He was her everything. What did she do wrong? She can fix it. She just wants you back. That's all. Please come back. It's because it was you. Only you. You were the person I imagined growing old with. You was the person I saw when I thought about love. You were my person. I felt at home with you. I felt safe. I felt found. That's why it's so hard to let go. Because in the back of my mind, I still wish we could go back to how we was. Even after everything that happened. And I don't know why. I hate everything about me. I hate how I look. I hate how I act. I hate my personality. I hate my body. I hate my lips. I hate my teeth. I hate my nose. I hate my eyes. I hate how small my eyes are. I wish my eyelashes were longer. I wish I had prettier hair. And I just feel like when someone says they like me or love me, they can't love me like that. They're just using me. And they just want that attention just so they could leave in the end.
The saddest shit is seeing your favorite person having more fun with someone other than you. They look so much happier. They used to be that way with you, but now it's like you're the last option. They only want to hang out when everyone else is busy and can't. Whenever you ask them if you can hang out, it's always, oh, I can't, I'm busy. But then an hour later, you see on their story, they're hanging with someone else having fun. The truth is sad. And I wish they knew how I feel, but they never will. It went from getting up early and wanting to go to school to not wanting to get up or go at all. It went from feeling motivated and energized to feeling tired and lethargic. It went from going to sleep early to not being able to go to sleep until three. It went from having a good appetite to not feeling hungry or overeating. It went from being responded to in a few seconds to being left on delivered for days. It went from being social and outgoing to isolating from friends and family. When does it end? I'm honestly so tired fighting. It's always my fault. So I have no use to fight. They would always see me happy or energetic. But inside me, I'm dying. Not even one person asked if I'm okay. They never knew why I said those words or why I do those actions. They never even know why I do things to myself. I'm tired. It's always me. It's always my fault. I don't have anything left to do. So I'll accept all of you leaving me because of my attitude. Because no one cares to stay to understand me instead leaving me. Let me guess. You cry every night but smile and laugh throughout the day so people don't worry about you. You sleep to escape reality. Whenever someone say something about you, you laugh it off and act like that didn't hurt at all. But you think about it all the time now. You get irritated and mad quickly. Whenever you're in an argument, you feel like crying but force yourself not to because you don't want to look weak in front of people but you don't cry because you're scared. You just want to cry because you're mad. Why are you always so mean? I miss the old you. Oh yeah, well it's your fucking fault I am the way I am now. You had to make a comment about anything I did, good or bad, when no one fucking asked for your input. You are the reason I'm mentally drained. You. I didn't need to hear the try harder when I was having a bad day. I did nothing to you. You started the fucking rumors about me. You ruined my fucking life. I hope you're proud of yourself. I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like none of my friends like me anymore. Did I do something wrong? And I want to talk to someone, but I don't want to vent to someone, and they then have something worse going on and think I'm selfish. Or talk to someone at school about it, because then they will tell my parents, and I don't have the energy for anything anymore. And I don't even have a proper reason. I just feel so drained all the time. You can leave me, or forget about me, and act like we're strangers. But I will still love you, even if it hurts. I will still love you no matter what. You may ask why. It's because ever since I met you, I have been attached to you. And you're the person I've been talking all the time to my friends. You are so beautiful. I love every single thing about you. I've loved you ever since we met. I fell in love with you when I saw you. Sure, I act a quirt around you. It's because every time I see you, I get nervous and have butterflies in my stomach. You're the chess piece that is missing in my story. I promised you that I will always love you to the very end. And I won't break that promise. Because they were the one who breaks it, not me. And I'll promise you I'll love you until I die. I'm sick and tired of just existing. I don't know what's wrong. Everything used to be so easy and fun. We wouldn't have to worry about anything. Now all I do is hide myself in my room, in my clothes, and even in my own mind. I wonder if anyone would even care if I just, you know, die? They're not coming back. Face it. One way or another, you're going to realize that some people come into your life to teach you a lesson. To make you stronger. Sadly, this person was that lesson. And I know you loved them. I did too. But you gotta let them go. Or you're not going to get anywhere. It wasn't meant to be. If it was, they would have stayed. They would have made you feel better about yourself. Not make you overthink that you're not good enough. She hates how big her thighs are. She hates how she looks in photos. She hates how big she is compared to her friends. She isn't fat, but she's not skinny. People tell her she looks pretty, but she just can't believe them. She hates how she covers her stomach when she sits down, just to hide her rolls. She hates herself. He's the backup friend, the one that stands behind the group as they walk to class. He's the boy who's never been anyone's first choice, barely even an option, 
people only care when no one else is around. Otherwise, he's ignored and just feels so out of place unwanted, like he's just there and no one is even aware. Usually when people ask how I'm doing, the real answer is I'm doing shitty. But I can't say I'm doing shitty because I don't even have a good reason to be doing shitty. So if I say I'm doing shitty, then they say, why? What's wrong? And I have to be like, I don't know, all of it. So instead, when people ask how I'm doing, I usually say, I am doing so great. And in that moment, it felt like... It felt like I was already dead. The only way not to feel bad is to stop feeling anything at all forever. Yeah, she's always smiling. Yeah, she's always happy. Yeah, she's rich, she has everything she wants. No, no she doesn't. She doesn't have everything she wants. She wants love and people to like her. She wants parents who never fight. She wants what other people have. She wants happiness. That's all she wants. She cries herself to sleep every night realizing she's never going to get those things. She can't even talk about it. People always tell her, you're just overreacting. People have it way worse than you. You're just searching for attention. And that makes it even worse. The ones she loves never love her. They break her. They break her in a million tiny pieces just like she's nothing. They don't care about her. But she cares about them more than everyone. She'll keep on loving them no matter what. And they'll keep on breaking her till there's nothing from her left. You know her, you say. But do you know why she always wants reassurance? Why she loves hugs? Why she puts others before herself? No, you don't. You don't know the pain and the stress she felt these past years. Only just for people to like her. One cut here, one cut there. No one will see and no one will care. I want to stop and it seems unfair. I do it again and again and again and again, and now there is too much damage beyond repair. I try and I try and I try to stop, but something won't let me. I feel stuck in a knot. I don't feel seen. I'm too stressed out. I'm scared of everyone knowing the damage I've done. Now everyone can see the damage that's done, and to not only me, but to everyone. Sometimes I want to give up and I don't see the point. I go home feeling like a disappointment. All I need is help, but that's not what I want. I want everyone to see that I am the one. Now, everywhere is red and I can't seem to stop. There is no space left to untie that knot. The knot keeps getting tighter and tighter until I can breathe no more. My wrists are so red I can't tell the difference between them or the sun. I feel like I'm being watched by everyone. All I can do is cry, and yet I can't seem to say goodbye. If I was gone, would anyone care? Would anyone really be there? Would anyone try to stop me, or would they watch and think that's fair? Would anyone help me the one, the one that needs help, the one that thinks he's being watched by everyone? Would anyone notice if I was gone? Would anyone cry from the beyond? The people I need the most don't make time. They are leaving me for people, for people that won't commit such a crime. Why does everyone act like the king and I am the slave? Everyone is acting like such a fucking mob. One cut here and one cut there. Now everyone can see my scars, that are everywhere. And still, to no surprise, no one cares. You told her you would never leave, but you did. You threw her away like some type of garbage that has been used. You made her think you were the right person, but were you? When someone tried pissing her off because she was with you, you just stood there doing nothing about it, so she had to ignore those people, even though it hurt just to be with you. If she chose not to be with you, then she would have not suffered from all the rumors and hate. She has always been there for you, always asking if you were okay. She always had time for you, even when she was busy. She tried her hardest to make you happy, but you just ended things like you didn't give a shit. All the memories you've had with her are gone now. Why couldn't you just leave her alone instead of leading her on? I hope you've realized what you have done to her. As she sat in her room, contemplating on whether she should do it or not, Handwritten notes to those who she ever loved. A pill bottle in her hand. One pill after another as she began to feel oozy, she blacked out. The devastation she felt when she woke up and not seeing a bright light. You never really know how addictive it is till you start. You tell yourself you'll only do it one time. Then that one time becomes every so often. Then every so often becomes every day until you can't even think of anything else. Everyone tells you to stop. They say you're too pretty or handsome to be hurting yourself. 
It isn't that easy. It isn't easy to just stop. It's an addiction. Why can't you see that? It's a coping mechanism. You can't just snap out of it. Why don't people understand that? Why don't people want to understand that? We try so hard every day to get sober. We have apps and charts and statistics in our heads. We don't want to be another statistic, another news story of a school kid who killed themselves. But people don't see that. All they see is us hurting ourselves for attention. 